On social media, there's so much talk about how to unlock your full potential. But what exactly does this mean? In this video, I would like to review this uh, topic from the perspective of neuroscience. And my mission is to help you understand whether you are using your brain at its full capacity, at its full potential or not. And in order to understand our brain better, we need to do a little bit of time travel. So imagine traveling back 300,000 years ago, somewhere in Northeast Africa. This is where we as species, Homo sapiens, evolved. And back in the days, we were living alongside quite dangerous guys like this saber-toothed tiger or these cute hyenas that we were running from, apparently. The fun fact is that Homo sapiens was not the only humankind that lived back in the days, but it is the only one that survived until 2024. But we did not just survive. Along the way, we invented some cool stuff, cool tools. We created incredible cultural heritage. We learned how to fly and how to film and edit video on YouTube and share it with the rest of the world. And what do we know from research that all this was possible because of our unique brain structure and in particular to a very specific brain area that we have which is prefrontal cortex and prefrontal cortex it's not a unique uh, feature of homo sapiens other mammals have it as well like dogs for example but a prefrontal cortex of homo sapiens is of larger proportion which makes it incredibly unique and if we look at prefrontal cortex in detail and examine the incredible features that this brain area is unlocking for us we can see that this part of the brain allows us to create long-term vision long-term goals create complex strategies think out of the box be curious and flexible and being able to adapt to changing environments however it's not all that cool and dandy despite the fact that prefrontal cortex is so incredibly powerful these cool features come at a certain cost and the cost that we are paying is that prefrontal cortex as a system it is slow and it is incredibly energy consuming. If you remember, we traveled 300,000 years ago, uh, back in the days when we were running from saber tooth tiger. So you can imagine that if we would be relying only our prefrontal cortex, then perhaps we would not make it until 2024 as humankind. That's why in our brain, we have another very important part, another hero in this game, and it is limbic system. And you can think about limbic system as sort of alarm a fire detector that is very sensitive to different changes different signals around us and whenever something is unclear it is activating and alarming that there is a danger let's look at the features of the limbic system as limbic system is our alarm system it has to be really really fast it acts in a mode of automotive reactions it is focusing on a short-term vision there is no time to make long-term plans because we need to uh, make decision here and now also our limbic system is very self-defensing protecting us also, it is very biased. It sees the world in black and white. There is no in the middle solution. And it's very rigid and very risk averse. And despite of being very different, these complementary opposites are often in conflict, but they are extremely effective when well coordinated. So think about the brain as a forecasting machine which scans the environment around us several times per second to detect threats and opportunities. And in this ecosystem, a limbic system acts more as a scanner that is checking what is going on. And then a prefrontal cortex acts more as an analyst that steps in and is uh, checking whether it's really a threat or if it's really an opportunity. However, there is a challenge. In a very simplified explanation of how our two brain areas functions, 
of course there are more other brain areas you can see that whenever limbic system is activated the capacity of our prefrontal cortex diminishes whenever our alarm system is on and alarming that something is wrong it is hard for our prefrontal cortex to step in and analyze if this is really a threat then what exactly triggers our limbic system and the answer is very simple the unknowns or uncertainty now let's reflect on how many unknowns or uncertainty do you do we all have throughout the day if we just explore our private context so what are the usual unknowns that we have uh, for example, how is my children doing at school? How are my elderly parents doing that are living abroad? Will I succeed with my new business project? Will I reach my KPIs? What is my boss thinking about my performance? Etc. Etc. And this is only a small portion of unknowns, of uncertainty that all of us are experiencing on a daily basis and that's not end of the story because there is another layer on top of that and these are unknowns that we are facing from the rest of the world because of technology because of social media every day we are exposed to news to everything that is happening in different parts of the world which creates more reasons for us to be worried about for example when will the war end what is happening with recession will i lose my job will ai replace me at work what's happening with the global warning etc and these are only a few unknowns that we getting exposed to every day because for our alarm system for our limbic system unknown is danger if we look again at the features of the limbic system we can see that it is very risk averse and it is very biased and by default it sees the worst case scenario in any situation and this leads us to seeing monsters where they don't exist it leads us to seeing problems not solutions and at this point you might be asking but wait aren't we designed to cope with stress and uncertainty and the answer is yes and no back in the days when we were living in our small tribes and we were exposed to the problems of our small village our small home that was the optimal so to say environment for our nervous system however again thanks to technology the volume of information that we are receiving today cannot be compared to the volume of news that we were facing even if we look back at 30 40 uh, years ago and what we know that the speed of change will get even faster and it is expected that in 20 years from now the rate of change will be four times of what it is today so what happens in our brain when we are constantly bombarded with news and uncertainty for our limbic system this is a showtime prime time if you will if we are continuously living in this mode of survival it brings us to a very serious consequence that a lot of us have experienced unfortunately and it is burnout if we talk about professional context then around 80 percent of employees have experienced burnout at their work what we also know that around 50 percent of people so every second person have experienced burnout more than once which is incredible and according to world health organization at least 1 billion of people worldwide are suffering from mental disorders caused by burnout now you might be asking what should i do with all this information i truly believe that when we are aware of the way how exactly is our brain functioning it creates more clarity more understanding for us if we are really operating at our full potential and to make it even more easier for you to understand your different mental states to understand different modes of mental activation and to help you navigate uh, between the different stages of our mental activation i want to share with you a very unique and at the same time very simple tool that i learned at neurointegration institute and it is uh, the scale of neurobalance. This tool is aimed to help you to train your interoception ability, ability to sense your internal signals, which will help you to understand 
which part of the brain is now dominating. Feel free to make a screenshot of this um, scale and it is a simplified version of the scale of neurobalance but it is a good starting point and recommended way how to use it is to do a regular check-ins with yourself and try to find yourself on the scale. Where are you in this particular moment? Are you really in a calm and balanced state or are you feeling panic and anxiety or total total apathy and indifference. When you have more awareness of how exactly you feel, you will have understanding of which part of the brain is now dominating uh, in your incredibly powerful uh, machine, which is called brain. I would personally recommend using this tool in a moments when you, you, when you need to make an important decision or when you are about to have an important conversation and this way you will understand if you are really ready Think about it as your own personal thermometer that will help you to understand the level of your arousal. So the next time you are about to enter difficult conversation, do a check-in with yourself. Where are you on the scale of neurobalance? How exactly you are feeling? Maybe it is really better to take a break. Uh, rebalance yourself and ensure that your prefrontal cortex is really functioning at its full potential. Before we wrap up this video, why don't we do a real quick uh, check-in with ourselves? Now looking at this neurobalance sca uh, scale again, looking at these three different zones of mental activation, red, green and blue, and try to remember where did you find yourself most of the time during the past seven days let me know down below in the comments thank you so much for watching and i see you in the next video bye